New CPUs and new GPUs means new laptops, and that's exactly what we're looking at today with the Aorus 17H. This Core i7-13700H and NVIDIA RTX 4080 infused 17-incher is gunning for high-performance gaming usage. Of course, a 17-inch screen means plenty of space for proper accompanying hardware, so we will be keen to see how much power the beefy cooling system can handle, plus that 99 watt hour battery looks juicy. With an interest in a high-end blend of brand new hardware, let's take a closer look at this Aura 17H laptop. The new second-in-command RTX 4080 laptop GPU inside this laptop is based on NVIDIA's latest and greatest architecture, that's Ada Lovelace. It features core counts of 7424 for CUDA, 232 for Tensor, and 58 for ray tracing, and that's alongside 12 gigs of GDDR6 memory on a 192-bit bus. Importantly, NVIDIA specs the RTX 4080 for 60 to 150 watts of GPU subsystem power. Now, we all know how awfully confusing NVIDIA's naming scheme is with respect to GPU hierarchy and the power allocation. We know that power holds a significant weight in, irrelevant of whatever 80, 70, 90 or whatever is in the name. But up to 150 watts of allowable GPU juice in fat chassis laptops is hefty. And interestingly, the RTX 4090 is specced for the same 150 watt maximum. So RTX 4080 laptop could be a very strong option indeed. On the CPU front, we see a deployment for Intel's Raptorly Core i7-13700H. This chip sports 6 performance cores and 8 efficient cores for a total of 20 threads. It's actually very similar to the Core i7-12700H that it replaces. Clocks are rated at 5GHz maximum turbo frequency, but as always, this will depend on the turbo conditions and the thermal dynamics. Nominally, this is a 45 watt part for base power with a turbo up to 115 watts but I will not be surprised to see 55 watt plus sustained modes in many of these high-end, high-performance laptops. And focusing on the laptop specific side for this roughly 2.7 kilogram Aura 17H BXF model, we get 16 gigs of DDR5 4800 megahertz memory in dual stick sodium form. There's a one terabyte gigabyte PCIe Gen 4x4 based M.2 SSD. The 17 inch thin bezel display operates at 1920 by 1080 at 360 hertz, which seems like a reasonable choice for gamers, albeit 1080p on a 17 inch panel is far from crisp or pixel dense. Battery specification is very impressive at 99 watt hours and that's fed by the 280 watt rated power brick. And then the connectivity is solid too. The dedicated GPU is handled behind a MUX switch. There's two and a half gig Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, Thunderbolt 4, a couple of USB type A, Mini DP 1.4 and HDMI 2.1, as well as a combo audio jack. Thunderbolt 4 is great to see, though I cannot quite understand the inclusion of Mini DisplayPort 1.4 versus USB Type-C carrying DisplayPort, because the latter has much better versatility, in my opinion. The per-key RGB backlit keyboard was enjoyable to use for my typing preference, and I particularly liked all of those useful function keys. I had no problems with the reasonably sized trackpad either, even with my big hands. And build quality is generally good, despite the high levels of plastic usage. Yes, I think the hinge could be a little bit more stiff, but the keyboard area is solid and the laptop feels tough. And to be perfectly honest, with a 30mm thickness, this is clearly not a grab-and-go laptop, especially with that 27 kilo weight also. But that thickness does provide a substantial amount of room for a beefy cooling setup with dual fans and some shared heat pipes. So I have every bit of confidence that we're going to see good cooling performance for this hot and heavy hardware squeezed under the hood. MSRP pricing for the Aura 17H in this specific specification is £2,249 in the UK. And that actually looks to be a reasonable price point currently for this blend of hardware. So let's take a closer look at how it performs. For testing, we run the laptop in the out-of-the-box state with minimal adjustments made other than Windows Update and installing our test software. Thankfully, Gigabyte doesn't include any junk software that we have to uninstall, so that is a clear tick in the positives box. We're going to test the machine in the gaming power mode because this seems like the sensible choice. 
We will, however, spend some time looking over the Creator and Turbo modes, as they're probably the other two that you'll tend to be using. Gigabyte Control Center software actually seems pretty okay. It isn't overly fancy, but it has some decent control options for power modes, fan profiles, and system operation settings. There's RGB Fusion, which can manage the keyboard lighting, and the dashboard page gives a solid amount of useful information. For comparison data, we have a batch of previously tested laptops that we have reviewed in recent months. However, we've got a brand new test procedure that we're bringing on board between the team here at KitGuru, uh, specifically for games testing, and that means that right now we don't have any worthwhile games comparison data from other comparable laptops. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but it's something you'll just have to bear with us on. As such, we're instead going to spend a lot of time doing a bit more of a deep dive into the power and thermal and clock dynamic configurations for this laptop in the various power modes. And as always, if you want more information on our test procedures and the likes, then head on over to the main written web page on the Kikuru website. That supports us massively too. Looking first at the different power modes from a CPU only loading perspective, all modes peak at the ludicrously high 115 watt turbo mode for a short period of time. Gamer stabilizes at 55 watts sustained, which is around 2.7 gigahertz average for mid 60s temperatures. Creator and Turbo stabilize at 70 watts sustained, which is around 3.1 gigahertz. Creator runs mid 70s, but Turbo is lower at high 60s due to much faster fans. In my opinion, Creator is the best mode for CPU only loading because it runs 70 watts sustained without the hefty noise output that Turbo gives you. For GPU only loading using 3D Mark Time Sprite stress test, Gamer and Turbo modes allocate 150 watts of sustained power to the graphics subsystem, albeit by bouncing above and below that 150 watt level. This results in clocks of around 2.1 to 2.2 GHz typically, and we see mid to high 80s for the temperature of the GPU and 96C for the memory when running Gamer mode. Turbo mode runs faster fans and reduces temperatures to mid 70s GPU and 90C memory. Creator mode allocates 115 watts of sustained board power, which results in clock speeds of around 1800 MHz typical, with temperatures around mid 70s for the GPU and 92 degrees Celsius for the memory, albeit with far more tolerable fan speeds and noise than both Gamer and Turbo. Gamer is the best GPU only mode in my opinion because it runs that 150 watt GPU power profile by default and does it with sensible fan speeds unlike the maximum fan speeds of Turbo. And then looking at combined full CPU plus GPU maximum loading, we see some interesting results. Gamer mode uses NVIDIA Dynamic Boost in Gigabyte's control center. This results in around 170 watts combined CPU plus GPU power of which we often see around 135 watts roughly tends to go for the GPU with roughly 35 watts for the CPU. Of course, this will be workload dependent and it bounces a lot too. Sometimes the CPU is up at 70 watts turbo and sometimes it is down at 30 watts. And by the way, that's 250 watts of wall power through the charger. Turbo mode by default uses NVIDIA Dynamic Boost and operates the exact same way as Gamer mode albeit with very slightly higher boost clocks by virtue of faster fans and fractionally lower temperatures. Creator mode, however, runs Gigabyte AI GPU boost by default. This allows the GPU to stay at 115 watts sustained while the CPU maintains its 70 watts. That is 185 watts combined, which is around 15 watts higher than the gamer and default turbo modes. And it resulted in around 265 to 270 watts sustained wall power draw. We noticed that Turbo Mode had the drop down option for Gigabyte AI GPU boost in the software. Running this allocates 125 watts sustain to the GPU and 70 watts stable to the CPU, albeit with the CPU spiking up at the 110 watt level initially, which was 320 watts of wall power draw. So, Turbo Mode with Gigabyte AI GPU boost looks to be the maximum all out mode but the default Turbo and Gamer modes using NVIDIA Dynamic Boost are arguably better for GPU priority workloads such as gaming. They steal a big chunk of power budget from the CPU and allocate a small amount extra to the GPU. The Aura 17H laptop handling 170 to 195 watts of combined sustained power is impressive indeed, even if the corresponding fan noise is pretty high at those levels. And here's the absolute maximum noise output that you're likely to hear from the Aura 17H. This is running turbo with maximum fan speed modes.
Obviously the microphone is quite close there and it's an absolute worst case scenario. Gamer and creator modes tend to run a bit lower on the fan speeds unless you're really pushing hard. The Gigabyte Aorus Gen 4 7000S 1TB PCIe Gen 4x4 NVMe SSD performs well in our speed testing. With the drive reasonably full, write speeds above 5GB per second are good to see. Thermal performance from the SSD and cooling system was fine too. We noted a drive temperature of 64 degrees Celsius after 9 back-to-back -back runs of a right heavy workload. Battery life is excellent from the Aorus 17H with its 99 watt hour battery. We recorded a result of almost 7 hours battery life according to the PC Mark 10 modern office test. That's a pretty legit result that translates well into a solid workday of usage. Not that this is necessarily the type of laptop you'll be using away from a power source for hours on end. For multi-threaded tests such as rendering, the new Core i7-13700H does extremely well in our Aorus 17H test laptop. This is thanks in large to the lofty 115 watt turbo power allocation that is then followed by a solid 55 watt sustained power in gamer mode. Combine that with 20 total threads and you have a clearly very powerful processor, even if it does dictate a lot of cooling and power delivery. And that point is highlighted clearly with our back-to-back -back city bench test. After 10 minutes of sustained runtime, the score drops from almost 16,000 points to just under 14,400. That's a reduction of 10% versus the single run score that includes the initial high turbo frequency. Even so, you're still getting a powerful chip after sustained loading. 7-zip performance is very strong on the 13700H. As is typical, we see the AMD Zen-based CPUs leading in decompression performance, but Intel's new Core i7 runs those high-end previous-gen Ryzen parts close, and the Intel chip's compression performance is very strong indeed, with a clear chart-topping result. Single-threaded is, surprisingly, not as strong as I expected. Perhaps it's the influence of the power profile that we selected, or early system and Windows drivers maybe, but there was a clear deficit for the Aorus 17H in our testing when compared to some previous generation processor models. Memory bandwidth is about where we would expect for 16 gigs of 4800MHz DDR5 in dual channel mode, i.e. this isn't as fast as some Intel based LP DDR5 or some LP DDR4X systems, but it comfortably beats out Sodium DDR4 comparisons. I would have preferred to see Aorus leverage the Intel CPU strong memory controller and go with faster RAM. Plus I can see the argument for delivering 32 gigs capacity at this price point. 3 d Mark's Time Spy CPU score is excellent with the new Intel Core i7 13700H inside the Aorus 17H. And we got a Fire Strike score of just over 33,000 points, which you can compare against your own system and other laptops if you are interested. For PC Mark 10's overall score, the Aorus 17H was ranked second, just behind a Core i9 equipped Asus laptop, though we really do not put too much weight whatsoever on this benchmark. Starting out with Borderlands 3, we see an average frame rate of more than 120 FPS with minimums above 60. That's a solid score for the badass preset at 1080p. Cyberpunk 2077 also manages triple digit average FPS with a very healthy 1% low number. This result is roughly comparable to a desktop caliber RX 6800 XT. Shadow of the Tomb Raider hits 144 FPS average, which runs very nicely on this high refresh rate screen. The 1% low value is a smidgen below 100 FPS too, which is very strong indeed. And Total War Warhammer 3 continues the trend of very healthy average FPS levels and a 1% low score near to 100 FPS. In fact, this is once again similar performance to a desktop Radeon RX 6800 XT. That's an impressive result for a gaming laptop. Finally, we see Watch Dogs lead and run at 101 FPS average with a 1% low of 66 FPS. That's more than enjoyable on this full HD screen. For 1080p gaming, the Aorus 17H with its 150 watt capable RTX 4080 laptop GPU is a performance powerhouse. The FPS numbers are very strong, even for those gamers who demand triple digit averages in modern titles. If we round this one out then, I like what has been done by the Aorus 17H for a gaming laptop. That combination of Intel's Core i7-13700H and the RTX 4080 laptop GPU looks to be an incredibly well balanced tandem. Running the Core i7 in sustained modes of 55 to 70 watts creates a powerful rendering or content creation machine. And couple that with the 150 watt capable RTX 4080 laptop 12 gig GPU and you have ample gaming performance on tap. Plus we saw the combined powers of 170 watts or even as high as 195 watts are capable for the cooling system. 
So Aorus is clearly doing a stellar job in delivering this high-end hardware the energy it needs to perform at high-end levels. Of course there are downsides to the primary hardware pairing. Having such high-end, power-hungry hardware on tap requires cooling, and that means that this 17-inch laptop is anything but nimble. It is clearly very beefy at 3 centimeters thick and 2.7 kilograms weight. Plus, the noise output when running heavy workloads is borderline unpleasant for those around you, of course, because headphones will undoubtedly drown out to yourself. The cooling system does handle the heat load well, though. Aorus's dual fan multi heat pipe implementation is clearly up to the challenge. Battery life from the 99 watt hour unit is impressive and there's clearly plenty of power on tap from the 280 watt power brick and you can charge via Thunderbolt 4 Type-C as well. Build quality is good with ample sturdiness from the keyboard and trackpad. I'm not massively keen on the widespread use of plastic, but I guess that's a trade-off for the price and weight and design targets. I'd have liked to see faster than 4800MHz RAM for a £2249 laptop in today's market, plus 32 gigs would be preferable even if adding slightly to the cost. And the screen is an intriguing one indeed. The color quality is good. I like the slim bezel design and the 360 hertz refresh rate makes for smooth gaming in lesser demanding titles. But I can't help but feel that 1080p is just a little too slim on the resolution side for a 17 inch display. The pixel density isn't high enough to result in a crisp image to my eyes. Overall, I like the Aura 17H and what it offers for £22.49 in the UK. The main hardware features that Core i7 and the RTX 4080 laptop GPU, they deliver the goods. And the Aorus cooling solution that allows them to deliver over 170 watts of combined power is clearly very competent. This is a fast, large form factor gaming laptop. Good job, Aorus. So I've been Luke Hill for Kickeroo. Thank you for watching this video review of the Aorus 17H gaming laptop featuring the new Core i7 13700H processor and the NVIDIA RTX 4080 laptop GPU. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below, as always. Of course, yeah, I'm in a slightly different environment right now, some things going on, so I'm out of the uh, usual home base shooting this video, but hopefully you enjoyed it anyway. As always, like, subscribe, do all that YouTube type stuff, check out our Patreon, Discord, and track with us on social media. Please check out the written review on the main Kickeroo website, that supports us massively, and check back for more content.